Pure Country Home Hangout with Kristen Carter. And uh, you look like you have a really cool book collection. Is that all yours? Thank you. I'm actually, I'm quarantining. This is my dad's apartment. So okay. I'm hanging out with Barry. And um, yeah, I've just got a couple couple of the books. He has a ton of fantasy novels and I feel like I couldn't like really talk about those at all. So I got to put them in front of those. Like I love a good fantasy novel. I'm a huge yeah. Game of Thrones fan, all of that. Yeah. And I put a couple in the front that I thought were kind of like interesting. And to be honest, I haven't read them all even. So maybe this is motivation now. Yeah. I see the Elton John one there, I think in the corner. I got that for my mom for Christmas and I'm dying to read it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my boyfriend's book. I haven't read it yet, but I love Elton John. And all he should, stuff. uh, we should do like a book club and read it together and discuss the books. I've always wanted to do that. And I've always been like, yeah, I'm going to do that one day. And then I never have. And then just don't. Yeah, my friend has a Zoom book club, actually. So exactly what you're talking about, where they all meet and they talk about the book. And I'm like, that would make it almost level up the awkwardness if you didn't read the book. Because then everybody's yeah. staring at you. You can't really like pass it off. It's like you go through each screen. And if you didn't read it, like, good luck. <laughs> like, I might be that person. Everyone's so. lo looking at you and you're like, uh, you feel like you're back in school where you're like, I didn't do my homework. <laughs> oh, gosh. Totally. And there's no Cole's notes to like, you know, fall back on or summary synopsis to try and like sneak your way through. No, nope. I'm just really <laughs> slow readers. So that's why I, I never really took up books as a main medium of entertainment because I just, I read as fast as I speak. So when I'm reading the book, it kind of goes that way. I don't know what that is for me, but yeah. So I always felt like people were ripping through Harry Potter when I was a kid. And I was like, why is it taking me like three years to finish the first one? <laughs> like I can't do it. So. I am definitely, I read fast if I'm really interested and no distractions, but I have a really hard time. When I was a kid, I was way better at it, which is kind of funny. But now as an adult, I can't sit down and just be like, I'm going to just read and not, I feel like your phone and social media has kind of ruined that. I like, I find I get distracted yeah. so easily. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my attention span, I feel like has completely gone out the window. Yep, it's I gone. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> you just gone. There's no hope. Have you ever gotten to the end of a page or maybe a chapter in a book and you're like, I have literally no idea what I just read. <laughs> like, no idea. And then read it back again and again and oh, again. Yeah. All the time. I'm like, I haven't retained any of this. If somebody said, what was that book about? I'd be like, I don't know. I think I read it, but I have no idea what it is actually about. <laughs> but there's probably a really great article online I can point you to. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. I've, I've looked through some of these. Things, but, uh, well, yeah. let me know if you dive into any of those. If you find I will. Things. Yeah. I'll let you, it'll take a few months, but I'll let yeah, you know. Exactly. Um, so I've been loving, obviously, you know, all your videos that you've been doing. I love your sad piano Sundays. Probably one of my favorite things ever. Because the thing that I love about your voice is like, especially on the Kelly Clarkson one you did recently, it's really just your voice that we're hearing. And it's so good. How much fun has it been for you to just, I feel like you have all this kind of creative, you know, free, free space right now that you're able to kind of just try anything. Has it been fun? Yeah, it has been a ton of fun. And, and, you know, the Sad Piano Sundays, I was really happy to put them out because that's just how I practice. I, I just go online and I find karaoke tracks and I kind of sing songs that I like and kind of work my way up to some of those high notes and stuff that I always want to reach for. And it's just, um, so one day I kind of thought to myself, why don't I just record these and then, you know, make it nice and put some reverb on and stuff and then and then film myself in my house or wherever we film it and, uh, and, and put it out and just, you know, have it be a, a way of, content but yeah that just started from me just doing those songs those are all the songs I love they're all kind of like the dramatic like diva ones or they're a song that everybody knows that's been like really slowed down and now it's all emotional and all that um so yeah those were really fun for me but I, it's kind of interesting the it almost is a little bit overwhelming I think having this much time because I feel a certain kind of a pressure and I don't know if that's a pressure I put on myself but I just kind of think to myself, I'm like, okay, like have a free day. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to be funny? Like, what am I going to put out on Instagram? You know what I mean? And in some ways I think that makes my content like not quite as good because I think it's, it becomes like a little bit less genuine, but I try like, and I'll try a bunch of different things. I've tried to do like kind of videos that are a little bit more humorous or putting out different songs and things, but um, yeah, it's been kind of a mix. So the time is great to have because putting together pieces like that I think they, they come off there like a few minutes long but you know to get the nice angles and try and make the music really really nice and the audio really nice does take 
a big chunk of time. So that yeah. having that time is good, but, but I do feel like an extra sense of like, okay, like, you know, like try and get more stuff out and try and put it out. So I don't know if everybody just kind of feel it, maybe feeling that a bit, but. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not even in your position and I'm like, Ugh, I haven't posted anything on my socials in like a week. I'm like, I don't, yeah. I feel a little bit of pressure, but I'm also like, guys, I got nothing. Like when I get off this interview with you, this is the most exciting thing that I'll have done today. And then I'm literally going to just go whoop, horizontal and nap on the couch. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Oh yeah, yeah. totally. And sometimes I'm, I'm coming up with ideas where like in an hour later, I'll be like, what the heck? Like, what was I even thinking that was funny? And I keep, I try and test them out on people too. And I'll test, I'll text people and be like, okay, is this funny or am I just going insane? Like, are people going to get? <laughs> this at all or is this just like as long I'm as just, you enjoy it I mean as long as you're enjoying yeah. it not everybody has to see everything that you do you at least have it for yourself thank goodness for that because, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will say the frozen video of you going out into the unknown to get milk was I watched it so many times I just watched it again before we talked because I was like it's just so good um Thank you. What was that like putting it together? And did you have, did you pass anybody while you were filming that was like, what is this girl doing? Yeah, yeah. I got some big stares. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Like once I left the apartment, I actually did have to go get milk. That's like the true real life journey yeah. to go and get groceries. And um, yeah, it was uh, just in my apartment filming, hanging around my neighbors, maybe heard, but didn't give me any looks. I think they might think that I'm crazy because they're constantly hearing me like singing or doing stuff or whatever, but they're great. They're great. And uh, yeah, I went outside and the one thing that I think people stared at the most is that scene where I'm like kind of like walking, you can see like trees and I'm just like singing it like this, like 100% of yeah. people who pass me and they're, they're just like, I bet they just chalked it up to like, this is a really weird time and we're just going to accept this and we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to let, let her do her thing. Um, and yeah, in Vancouver, I don't know if I don't, there might be people doing weird things. So that's okay yeah. too. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I feel like I've completely... I think I've been in the house for too long that I've lost my mind a little bit to the point where I just like, my brain doesn't function quite quick enough in the morning anymore. Um, yeah. And so the other day I went to take the garbage out and I had just a empty orange juice container. And as I was walking out, I was like, oh, when I'm out here, I got to grab the mail too. And so went out, took the mail out, put the orange juice container in the mailbox and went in the house. And I went, did I just do what I think I just did. And then I went back out and like four of my neighbors were like, Hey, I'm like, you saw me do that. My yeah. Sorry. <laughs> quarantine is really getting to me. <laughs> yeah, it's quarantine. For yeah. Sure. I was so like, don't judge me. You know, you've done something ridiculous too. <laughs> no, it's okay. I think there's a blanket acceptance. I think. of it. Yeah. We're all, yeah. we're all adapting to this new, new life. Have your neighbors, because I know you did some of your stuff out on the patio and whatnot. Do you have neighbors that are like out there enjoying it or are they like, we're trying to sleep, you're still singing, what's going on? Because I would be like, I'm going to, you know, crack open a nice bottle of wine and sit and enjoy a Kristen Carter concert. You just sit outside my front door and just like put your ear up or something like that. Oh my gosh, I know. So my neighbors, like the neighbor upstairs is lovely. I, I yesterday, I, I had a live stream maybe last week and I went outside to talk to her, um, her during the 7 p.m. clap. So that's every day I see her at 7 p.m. So we go out and I kind of like lean my head up and wave and she's super lovely. And I, I kind of oh. asked her, like, hey, just so you know, I have this live stream and it'll be going on for a little bit. And, um, you know, it'll be from about seven through eight thirty. Like, is that okay? And she goes, sorry. And I'm just like, yeah, it'll be maybe a little bit noisy, but it shouldn't be too bad. And she's like, oh my God, no, I don't care about that. But like, how do I watch it? And I'm like, well, it's, it's on Instagram. And she, and she's just like, okay. She's like, I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't know Instagram. I don't have Instagram. Can you like explain this day? So I sent her like this email with like Aww. how to like make an account. And I was like, can you watch it on my story, which is like this little bubble and like just trying to give it like the lowdown on it. So they're so great. And I'm, I'm really thankful for that. That's just been awesome. I don't know my neighbors in the hallway super well. I know they have a dog because I can hear the dog. So I feel like we're even. Yeah. If I'm like super I'm loud. I'm like, yeah, but your guys dog dog? No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> It's all good. good. That's so cool though. I swear this whole situation I feel like has made us connect and communicate with people we probably wouldn't have met or communicated with in the past because yeah. especially like your neighbor above you it's like you know you wouldn't have been playing a bunch of shows in your living room that you would have had to deal with that so it's like she probably yeah, you have to figure it out and I would have never really met her at all because in the apartment building how it works is you need a fob for whatever floor you live on right so there's no way I would have ever 
gone up to meet her or see her so so that's kind of cool and also like um i'm not sure if like I, I wonder if i don't know if i can spin my laptop to be able to like let you guys see this well enough but my apartment building is pretty close to the apartment building across so yeah I've seen it well, videos. oh yeah right so um when i go out there there's like little families that live across the way and like this little girl's like six and she like every day she like waves like furiously to us and it's just like hey so you kind of get to know it's neat when everybody comes out at the same time because you you really do get a sense of like oh my gosh there's so many of us here. We're all going through the same thing. And, yeah. you know, it's just nice to see a friendly face and give a nice, a nice clap and cheer for everybody who's working so hard. So that, that has been, it's a nice little bright light. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, congratulations on Double Take and Home Tonight. And I love that you are just releasing music and fans are able to keep seeing different sides of Kristen Carter. Is there still more music that is waiting to be released? I mean, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got some plans. <laughs> I assume there may be some plans in the works. I don't know. You may have heard it from someone. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, yeah. we'll just keep our ears open to maybe hear some new stuff. I love that. I'm, I'm super excited, and I know your team, um, you have one of the best teams ever around you, and they are just so excited about everything you're doing, and I think that's, that's got to be extra special for you. Oh, that, totally. Just to be able to have a team around you who like champions you and supports you and, and, you know, wants to work hard with you to get things out and to, you know, really build your career in such a fulfilling way has been just amazing. I always, I always feel like I get to the end of that sentence and I don't have like a word for how, for how like grateful or how good it is, you know, so, it's just, <laughs> you know, so good. So, I need to find one. I'll make one. Yeah. Maybe if I read more, I'll, I'll get yeah. the book. <laughs> <It's laughs> like a thesaurus in that, uh, that library over there. You can try to find oh, yeah. some sort of really big word to describe it. Um, okay, so I want to do a quick like 10 rapid fire questions with you just, to, just for us to learn some more things about Kristen Carter. So first thing is what's the best advice that you've ever heard? Ooh, best advice that I've ever heard. Um, I always loved when, when I heard from, it, it came from a previous job I had. They had this um, initiative that they started that was called Get Better at Getting Better. And I just thought that that in itself was such a strong statement of to always be learning and always trying to push yourself and never plateauing. Um, and just to keep expanding and keep trying to be creative and looking outside and just, just that sense that you're never done. Yeah. You, know, you get to certain points sometimes, and, and I think lots of people – sometimes they'll be like, oh, you did this, and then, and then that, that's it, but it's like, no, for me, it's like, you got to just keep getting better at getting better, so, like, keep practicing, keep going out there, keep singing and making your neighbors, you know, like, giving them a little show through the walls, all that stuff, just keep working and keep learning, because it keeps you really, really motivated, yeah. um, then you're kind of ready for, for the moments that come up, right, so you don't have to have an opportunity come your way and then have to catch up to get ready for it. It's like, you're already ready. You're yeah. already there. You already have the skills to kind of apply to it. And, and, and I just thought that was such an amazing concept. It was in a totally different field, nothing to do with arts at all, but I really liked the sentiment of it for sure. So, yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, what is your favorite family tradition? Ooh, Ooh that's a good question. I'm trying to think. Mine for sure is Christmas every Christmas Eve. I feel like I immediately go to Christmas when I think of traditions. We always yeah. watch White Christmas, and it is just one of my favorite movies in the entire world. I could watch it all the time, so that's definitely my, my family tradition. So good. I love that movie. Just trying to think, because like, we had some stuff when I was like a lot younger. Oh, okay. Well, well, one of my favorite family traditions, it does have to do a little bit with Christmas, um, but it actually with friends too, and it happened as I got older. Um, cause my parents split up when I was a little bit older. So we kind of like, we didn't have the same kind of childhood things anymore, which is like fine. You know, that's, that's a lot of people's stories too. Um, but what my mom really missed was that like, you know, people coming over and, and doing these things with, with friends and kind of like reliving these things we used to do in childhood, like making gingerbread houses and stuff like that. Uh, so every year she does this big thing that we call gingerbread day. And I, I have a car here. So, but a lot of my friends in Vancouver don't cause transit's pretty good. And you know, it's expensive to have a car. So I truck all my friends from the city out and we all go out to white rock, which is where my mom lives. And she just Martha Stewart's the whole 
day. Like I'm talking like, it's like a picture from the Canadian Living Magazine. <laughs> like it's just amazing. She pre-cuts all these beautiful little things to put together. She even puts shingles on the roof pieces. Like just outstanding. Wow. And oh. Yeah, I, and so she just went for it. The first year I kind of did it like, it'd be nice to bring everyone out there and we'll kind of make houses together. And But she just went for it. And so then ever since, like that started, I think about three years ago, maybe four years ago. So every ever since we do it and my friends will message me around November being like, okay, like which Sunday's gingerbread day? Cause like I have to mark it off, but I have to book it off work. <laughs> so, That's so amazing. You know, like, yeah, it turned into this fun way to kind of do something that was seemingly maybe for, for kids or I guess nothing's ever specifically for kids or adults, but I guess making yeah. gingerbread houses a little bit more towards that side. And so it was just a really nice way to continue to do that yeah. um, and make it something completely brand new and really fun. So, so yeah, it's family and friends and that's probably one of my favorites. That. That's so cool. Um, this one I'm interested, what's your favorite Disney movie? Oh, that's a deep question, Shannon. <laughs> that's like an yeah. end of a question. We're, we're digging deep here. Yeah, I mean, I have a, fiery passion for Disney movies. I love I them. assumed. <laughs> I mean, like, yes, obviously. It just, there's just like, they're so good. Um, ooh. One that's coming to mind that I really, really liked was Tangled. Okay. Which is not like a super popular one, or I guess maybe it, it is pretty yeah. popular, but I guess not one of their mainstream ones. Loved that one as I got older, just because it had such fun music in it, and Mandy Moore is the voice of um, Rapunzel in that one, and I just like, I, I stan Mandy Moore, like from when, like long ago when A Walk to Remember and stuff. That yeah. was like, just like, I, I don't know if that was just like my, my like, moment where I like cried heavily for the first time in a movie as a kid or something, but it just sticks with you. And, and I love the sound of all the characters and the animation's really fun. And, and then the story of Rapunzel too, with this big, long, like shiny hair. And, like, yeah, that's a great choice. I love Tangled. I love the Aristocats. That's like that's such a great strange one, but one of like my, I, lo I loved watching that as a kid. Um, okay, music. two more. Do you collect anything? And what is it? Oh, do I collect anything? You know, what? I don't know if I do. I don't think I do either. I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, I guess I collect concert stuff. Like whenever I go to a show or have a festival pass or whatever, I collect those just to like, now it's gotten to the point where I think I probably have too many that when I have children one day, they're going to be like, this is a, a lot, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like, where are we keeping this? How are we going to scrapbook it? Yeah. Uh, scrapbooking, by the way, side note, takes so much time. My mom showed yeah. me her scrapbook. It's just full of all this stuff. And I'm thinking like, how much time did you spend on this? She's like, hours, literally. We, hours. we don't have the attention span for that, Kristen. I, can't, I can barely get through a book. We've been over yeah. this. Um, <laughs> One thing I remember collecting as a kid though is, so I grew up um, in White Rock, it's, it's right on the beach, and I used to go down all the time and collect seashells. So okay. I would have those in my house, and those have kind of gone away, I didn't really hang on to them or keep them, but I used to kind of drill holes in them and then um, put them on necklaces and paint them on the inside. Um, ah. A bunch of those for a while, and I would collect- You're very, uh, oh, You're very crafty, so I'm not surprised <laughs> that you, you would do something like that. <laughs> Thank you. But, yeah. They were fun. And, and so I'd kind of collect little ocean items from, then I went to school in Halifax and they have these super cute little orange sea stars out there. So I would like buy some of those from the market and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing I can think of that I maybe consistently collected a little nice. bit. Okay. I like that. And last thing, very, very important question. Uh, what is your favorite breakfast cereal? Ooh. You're hitting me with the real tough questions today. <laughs> Going in the real talk. I'm going to totally, <laughs> I'm the worst with cereal. I'm, I like I'm not cereal. even sarcastic. Like these are really deep. <laughs> like, I know. I just, like, too many options. You're like, oh no, how do I choose? Um, I love chocolate Lucky Charms. They are in no way healthy, but. Yeah, they're really good. Did you pick out the marshmallows too? No, I don't. I'm not one of those people. Yeah. I mean, good for you though, because it is. So, really we're, we're, working it out. we're working it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, one thing that came to mind is I really like it's it's a little specific, but it's it's corn pops and the camping size. Like when you're camping and you can oh. open it up and then you put the milk in it. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. 
Okay, that's a great choice. Oh, I want corn pops now. <laughs> yeah, but it has to be like on a camping trip from the little box after you wake up and you have to have had like an aggressive fight with your siblings over like you having that one and not like the Rice Krispies or Fruit Loops or whatever, whatever else, else was in the package of random yeah. materials. Yeah, now, man, I haven't had co corn pops in so long. I feel like I'm going to have to, I'm going to get some of the camping ones and just go sit in my backyard and be like, yeah, that's for Kristen. <laughs> Of you rank them for me please and send it you know what's funny about corn pops too is they're different in canada than they are in the u.s yeah um completely different and my boyfriend went and played hockey in college in the u.s and i used to mail him corn pops like send him down corn pops because he didn't Aww. have any so for like just for fun or for like a surprise or something and it would end up costing like so much money because it's pops worth it seven dollars so I don't even know and then you'd mail it down and be like oh thirty dollars of shipping right and it'd be like this forty dollar cereal and I'm just and we're like but it's worth it though worth so, every penny those corn pops oh, absolutely I'd do it again I'd do it tomorrow I love that well thank you so much for doing this it was so good to see your face and just get to catch up and hopefully sooner rather than later we get to see each other in real life and get a hug in and I get to hear you play some of your new songs live that would be really nice Thank you. Yeah, it was so good to chat with you. I hope you're doing well and everything's good. And yeah, I can't wait for everybody to come back together and just give like non-virtual hugs. And I know. I just want a nice big hug. <laughs>